So in looking back on the great Iron Bowls of all time, we've got uh, Bo Jackson going over the top. We've got, of course, the kick six. We even have last year's game of 48-45 Auburn win that was thrilling. Few people are going to bring up the 2020 version, which is probably just a footnote to Alabama's run to the SEC championship, the college football playoff, and maybe more. 42-13. We break it down here, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please like the videos, share the videos out on social media, comment below on your thoughts on Auburn and Alabama, the rest of the season coming up. And of course, subscribe right here and uh, hit that bell for the notifications. That way, you know, when we're going live, which is multiple times each day, got Jamie Hancock on the line from preps nation to take on the Auburn side in particular, Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mark. It's great to be here with you tonight and uh, glad to talk a little bit of football. Yeah, so we probably were watching uh, the best team in the country tonight. Yeah, and it definitely wasn't uh, the team in in white, orange, and blue. Uh, And and like you and I were talking before, uh, the best football team uh, tonight won the game. And and what I have to believe is uh, should be the number one football team in the country, and and that's the University of Alabama. I don't think there's any doubt uh, to me they're the best team that I've seen, and I definitely have no qualms with them being much better uh, than my Auburn Tigers here tonight. So let's run through it a little bit here. Before we started to record, you had mentioned that uh, there's no way you're beating an Alabama team that's this explosive on offense by kicking field goals, which, of course, Auburn did twice in the first half. Trying to think what the score was, maybe 21-3. Maybe it was just the one time in the first half. Then it was 21-6. It seemed like the one chance they had to get somewhat back in the game was when Seth Williams dropped that uh, pass over the middle there was a deep shot he he beat his man he was wide open it was delivered perfectly right through the bread basket would have been 21 10. yeah and and you look at that and and when you when you're looking at beating the university of alabama in tuscaloosa and they're better than you you have to put yourself in position, players, coaches, everyone, uh, to take advantage of anything that you get. And by no means do I believe that I'm smarter than Gus Malzahn or Chad Morris or Kevin Steele by any stretch of the imagination. However, when when you're looking at a third and three like they were uh, down 21 to three, you have to make that play call to me as if it's four down territory. You have to run the football, see what you may get, and then assess whether if we get it to fourth and one, we go for it. We look to try to get into the end zone. Even though uh, you're going to be 26, 27 yards away if you get the first down, you have to play it that way, and they didn't. They they have one of the best kickers in the country. I understand that. You have an offense that is not as good as the defense you're playing. I get that too. Uh, for all of those reasons, you have to take every opportunity that you get uh, when you get it into third and short on, on your side of the field. Uh, that being said, you mentioned the Seth Williams drop. I'm not looking to pick on Seth Williams. Um, that's he's, he's the best offensive player that, that Auburn University has. That drop was massive because not only did you have a chance to try to get yourself back in the game, it is followed very shortly after by an interception, which I take a little bit of umbrage with. Uh, a few plays earlier, Auburn ran a similar route, throwing an throwing out to gain six or seven yards and having to throw the football 35 yards or so across the field. I am not a big fan of that play call. And on the first one, I was glad that Bo made a bad throw. I was and the one thing I looked at, at the people sitting next to me, I said, I sure am glad that was a bad throw because that that was trouble. Five or six plays later, the exact same uh, concept comes back pick. Again, not a great throw. It's behind the receiver a little bit. If he makes a perfect throw, does Schwartz catch it? Probably. But again, you're looking, you're throwing the ball 30, 40, 45 yards to gain six or seven. I hate that concept. I always have. Uh, whether it's on Friday night, Saturday, or Sunday, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, it's a tough throw for a quarterback to make, and it's uh, the risk reward is difficult, and uh, the angle is difficult. And if you've got a a good player at corner who makes uh, can anticipate the football, then uh, it can be disastrous. Uh, Bo goes twenty three for thirty eight for two twenty seven through some costly picks, as you mentioned. How much do you put on him versus uh, offensive line, which was addressed uh, late in the broadcast about it being a down year for the offensive line, trying to get better toward next year? 
You know, a lot of Auburn people have been big Bo apologists from the beginning, and I haven't been. I've seen – I try to judge the young man for what he does on the field at the time that he does it. I, I love the fact that he's an Auburn legacy. I love the fact that he loves Auburn. I love the fact that he plays with passion. I, I do not – uh, try to, to scoop kitty litter on his mistakes. Uh, last year, the Auburn people were so in love. And I said, look, he's doing fine. He's not doing great. He's doing fine. There are a lot of Auburn people that go to the flip side. They want to kill him. And for those, I say, look, he's doing fine. He's not doing terrible. He's doing fine. He played fine today. He didn't play terrible. He didn't play great. He played fine. And again, uh, the throw that, that the pick happened on the out pattern, yes, it was not a great throw. I don't think he should have been put in that situation. Uh, the the other pick that he threw on the screen, I give all the credit to Alabama's freshman slot corner for making that play and getting his hands on Eli's stove and not allowing him to get off. That is an anticipation route. Bo has to throw that football assuming that his slot receiver is going to be there. And it's not Stowe's fault. It's not Bo's fault. That was a defensive play by a young man that plays well beyond his years for the University of Alabama. And unfortunately for Auburn fans and everybody else that lines up against them with their slot receivers, that kid is going to still be there three years from now. And he's really good. And again, Bo missed some throws. There were some completions that he made that his receivers make catches on. If he makes a good throw, they have a chance to gain yards after the catch. He didn't make those throws great tonight. But he did some other things really well. So he's a mixed bag. I really would love to see uh, Chad Morris and the Auburn staff get him more involved in the running game. Do Is it a detriment if he gets hurt? Sure, it is. But he is so much better. The offense is so much better when he gets a chance to run the football. But, again, mixed bag for both for me tonight. But I, I'm, I'm definitely not uh, trying to bury him. The offensive line did what they could. They were outmanned by a better unit. Give Alabama credit up front for what they did against uh, Auburn's group. Injuries notwithstanding, doesn't matter. Really good front for Alabama. Alabama explosive as usual. Uh, Mac Jones throws for 302 and five touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Smith does his thing. Seven for 171, a couple touchdowns. John Mechie had a tremendous catch in the corner of the end zone for another touchdown. This group, they lose Jalen Waddle, who might uh, be the m most explosive of the bunch, and they, they just still come at you in waves. Is it is it a bit tough to even evaluate the Auburn defensive performance? Because again, they're probably facing the best offense in the country. You know, I don't I don't really have a problem evaluating. Like you said, they came at you with everything, and and I wish Jalen Waddle was healthy because he's such a great football player. You don't want to see anybody get hurt. I think that the injury actually made Alabama's offense better schematically because you can't rely on the simple fact that oh, we'll throw it to Jalen or we'll throw it to Dante and there's nothing you can do about it. All of a sudden, the tight ends are more involved. All of a sudden, they're more multifaceted because they're missing this dynamic weapon and you feel like you have to do some things and now they're doing them. And so I, I wish Jalen Waddle was on the field for the University of Alabama because he's spectacular. I don't think their offense is is has missed a beat simply because other guys have been forced to step up, not so much in the receiver department, but in the tight end department. And you're seeing the tight ends start Billingsley and Fornstall, but be more uh, a part of the game. And that just gives you something else to have to worry about. Auburn's defensive front, for me, maybe one of their best games of the year simply because they were absolutely coming into this game as an outman bunch. Give Kevin Steele credit. He took uh, Derek Hall, uh, made him a little bit more of a linebacker that like you saw some five man fronts uh, for Auburn. You saw Derek Hall uh, play a little bit of the, uh, I believe the will linebacker spot for Auburn uh, tonight to get a little bigger and in the front played good. The, the linebackers, when you talk about, uh, McLean and Papo, they're about 200 pounds each. And they're having to take on these massive guards and trying to fill lanes by taking on these guards. That's tough. That's really tough. Um, so uh, I, I do – the one thing that I, I feel a little bit uh, negative about was the secondary. 
And the simple fact is the Alabama receiving core is very tough, but I discipline. I discipline in the secondary is something that you see Nick Saban's teams play well with and other teams falter. And tonight you saw the I discipline when uh, Christian Tut and Smoke Monday are both taking a look at the receiver and you've got the bracket coverage. Well, somebody's underneath, somebody's got to stay over the top. Their I discipline brought them both to the same spot. Um, and, and you see it throughout the game. Roger McCreary uh, on the, the touchdown on whatever and goal to go uh, to Devontae Smith. And a lot of people said Smoke Monday. Smoke Monday did what he was supposed to do. The number two receiver, which was a tight end, sat down, so he came up. McCreary got nosy looking in the backfield and allowed Smith to beat him inside. And that's where eye discipline makes all the difference. Nick Saban's teams, they do it. I discipline across the board, give them credit. They were where they were supposed to be. Auburn and many other teams, their eyes mislead them. And, and great schemes will do that. And speaking of Nick Saban, Alabama wins its first game without Saban on the sideline since 2006. Of course, he tested positive and hopefully he's uh, in good shape. Najee Harris goes for 96 yards as Alabama runs it for 5.3 per carry. Uh, 42-13 as Alabama doesn't give up a touchdown until it's uh, garbage time against Auburn in winning uh, this one by 29. So for Alabama, it's just the one game left at LSU before the SEC championship game against uh, Florida. Auburn's got a, another tough one against uh, Texas A&M next week, then Mississippi State to wrap it up. Uh, what would you like to see out of the Tigers uh, in terms of progress the next two weeks? Well, you know, um, pre-three-week layoff, you saw progress coming uh, from Auburn. And I'll be honest with you, I saw some of those concepts tonight. I really did. Um, you're, you're missing some key pieces. Alec Jackson is not at left tackle. That's a big loss for a team that was starting to jail. Uh, Roderick's ham played the first half at right tackle. He didn't play the second half. Uh, Tank Bigsby still does not look fully healthy. That's fine. I, I agree with what they did by getting – those guys out of this game when they could. And, and so you go into the Texas A&M game and build off of what you have started to establish. You're seeing yourself with Pagese being more of a factor. I would love to see the tight ends continue to be a bigger factor for Auburn. Um, Mark Anthony Richards would, would be a nice addition somewhat to the running game. Running game's not a problem. Just keep building off of what you did. You played a better team tonight. They beat you. That doesn't mean you scrap everything and, and go to something completely new. You had some opportunities to make this game closer, and that's what you build upon. You go against Texas A&M. You take your same offensive ideas into this game and build upon them. Well, the big challenge for Auburn, against A&M will be stopping the run. Texas A&M is very good in the running game. That's Auburn's weakness uh, on their defense because of their linebacking situation. That's not to say that Papo and McLean are not good players. They're just both in a tough situation. They're offensive linemen that weigh as much as they do combined. So um, it's, it's just a big situation uh, for them to stop the run. And I think that's what you have to do. You take a similar approach. Uh, defensively, as you did tonight, you look to try to get bigger up front, maybe play Derek Hall again, some at backer uh, to, to basically set up a five man front. And Texas A&M is not nearly as dynamic outside as Alabama. So you go into that game with a very similar uh, approach against. A, I, and I don't mean this as any disrespect against a much lesser football team. So um, and then hopefully you get to play Mississippi State, which is a team that you should uh, be have more talent than and you finish out the year uh, the regular season at seven and three and honestly uh, I think that's a that's a fairly uh, decent season now if you lose to Texas A&M you know it's it's not a great look but uh, again good football team you just have to see where you are that's a game you can win they couldn't win tonight they really couldn't um, A&M you can win you, you have to find out where you're at yeah, that lesser yeah. team in A&M uh, still is probably one of the 10 best teams in the country. That's just how good Alabama is. And, of course, they beat A&M by four touchdowns. All right, Jamie Hancock on the line to talk Auburn, Alabama. He's at PrepsNation.com. You can catch him there. Also on Twitter at PrepsNation. Jamie, always appreciate the discussion and the conversation and uh, always learn something about Auburn football from you. 
hey i look i look forward to joining you guys in the upcoming week